Recently, Cornelius Demrich asked me how to create VDBs of clouds, for example, for rendering them in Octane or any other render engine that supports VDBs. And thanks to two really helpful nodes in Houdini, the process is rather straightforward. So in Houdini, the first thing I'm going to drop down is a geo node. Dive in, delete the default file. And I'm going to drop down a sphere. And the first thing I'm going to do with that sphere is generate a geometry which defines the rough shape of the cloud. So I want to set it up to generate polygons and increase the frequency a bit and drop down a mountain sub just to distort the sphere a bit. Then maybe drop down a transform node and squash it a bit. So let's scale it down on the y axis. Something like that. And this is going to be my input geometry for the cloud. For rendering a cloud, for example, in Octane, all I need is a fog VDB which contains density values. I could generate that manually with um, all the beautiful VDB nodes, but especially for the cloud case, Houdini brings two powerful nodes with it. On the one hand, that's the cloud node that will take care of generating a cloud VDB. So let me activate that. And I see I've got a pretty standard looking fog VDB here. And the other node is really helpful for generating clouds is the cloud noise node. And the cloud noise node is there to roughen up the edges of my cloud a bit to distort the cloud. So let me just wire up a volume slice here to visualize what we're doing. And let's set this to be in the grayscale range. And by default, my cloud sop will generate density values from zero to 10. So let's set my volume slice up accordingly. In the visualization range, let's choose zero to 10, like so. And I see this is my current cloud. So the resolution is pretty coarse at the moment, which makes it on the one hand quicker, but on the other hand is lacking in detail. So let's dial up the clouds resolution. And we're going to do that in the cloud sop under the volume tab. And there are two ways how I can influence the clouds resolution. On the one hand, I can choose a sample number along the longest axis of my input geometry. On the other hand, I can just choose it by size, which is the same thing as we're used to from the VDB to polygons node. In our case, let's just stick with the max axis and dial this up to say 100. Let's highlight our cloud noise node. And let's go through some of the parameters of those two nodes here. On the one hand, in the cloud node, I can set up the resolution of my cloud VDB. On the other hand, I can set up my density. So this will influence how the interior of my cloud VDB is going to be filled and uh, what is the maximum value allowed for the density. Also, we have this powerful tab, which is called scatter shapes. And when I activate this, on the one hand, I can choose to visualize my cloud shape as a polygon. So this will yield the outline of my cloud shape. And what I can check here is fill source. This is going to scatter spheres into my cloud volume. Also, there is a set second option called secondary shapes. And this is going to scatter smaller spheres on those spheres. This may not look like much when we view it like this. But as soon as we uncheck visualizes polygons and highlight our cloud noise node, we see this yields those really jaggy structured edges that we are so used to from those clouds that we see in a bright summer sky. So back to our cloud node. And the only tab left in here is the flatten tab. And what that allows me to do is kind of flatten the underside of the cloud so that you can generate clouds that look a bit like thunderstorm clouds where they are just towering and have like a flat bottom. And the way you do it is you specify the origin of the flattening and dial up the bottom and top scale. So we can flatten it on both sides, bottom or top, and dial in those thunderstorm clouds. Let me uncheck that for now and also uncheck the scatter shapes so that we're working on our standard input geometry. So when we highlight the cloud noise, I have those parameters to influence the cloud shapes. On the one hand, the general amplitude, and that drives how strongly the cloud gets distorted. So when I dial this up, you can see the shape of my cloud growing and also the jagginess of my cloud growing. Let's dial that back. What this node also gives you are controls for the noise that is used to distort the cloud. So you can choose different noise types here and control the noise shape with all those parameters that you already know from within the VOPs where we've been using noises. Under the advection tab, I can choose if I would like to advect the noise or not. 
And in order to highlight what that does, let's switch to the volume slice and zoom in a bit. And you cannot see much here, but let's dial this up a bit. And what a deck noise does is it distorts the noise again using another noise. So it rather looks like a flowing field rather than the standard Perlin noise that we're used to. Again, you can adjust the noise used for advection here. And the last tab allows you to use a noise mask. So you could use a point attribute on your incoming geometry that would shape your cloud and wire this up in here, call the attribute noise, and this would drive where the cloud noise gets applied to our shape and where it doesn't get applied to our shape. It's really handy if you would only like to shape one part of the cloud and leave the other one smooth. Okay, but for now, we'll leave it set like that and highlight our cloud noise again. And one thing that bugs me a bit about this, let's just dial down the advection a bit and dial up the noise. So I really like the shape that this yields. However, when I highlight the volume slice, one thing that is bugging me a bit is that within the cloud, the density seems to be mostly the same. So let's quickly fix that with the help of a volume bob. And wire this up in between here and let's dive in. And what I'd like to do is I would like to check where my density is above zero and I would like to apply a noise to the density there. So first, let's check where our density is above zero. So that's done with a compare node, wire in the density here and tell it to test if the density is greater than, let's say zero or 0 0.05, something like this. And if this is true, this output here will become one, otherwise it's zero. So let's use that in a switch to drive that. So again, if our density is greater than 0 0.05, the switch will switch to the input with the ID one. And this is a bit confusing because the input one on our switch has the ID zero. So let's wire up a constant there. So if our density is below this value, it should just output this zero here. Otherwise it should output our noise. So let's generate a noise and the quick noise would be the AA noise, the anti-alias noise like so. And what that needs to work is a position as an input and it'll output a noise here. Okay, let's wire this up in the density slot here. And we see something is happening, not quite what we expected. So let's go over this. What was happening before is our density ranged from zero to 10. However, the AA noise is outputting a noise which ranges from minus 0 0.5 to 0 0.5. So let's fix that and remap this with a fit node and put the noise in here and say source minimum is minus 0.5, source maximum is 0.5. And we want to range this from zero to 10 in the output. Okay, that is better. And we can see now those grayscale values in here. So we have now noise in here. However, we maybe wanna adjust the contrast or the mapping of this. And that can be easily done by adding a ramp node. Let's set it up to be a spline ramp and wire it in in here. The only thing we need to fix now is the ramp node works with values from zero to one. So let's adjust our fit node accordingly to be from zero to one and compensate for that by multiplying the output of the ramp with a constant in our case 10. Wire this in here and go up one level again. And we can now adjust the mapping of our noise in here. So for example, let's add a point here and set this to be a B spline as well as this and this point. So we can adjust the mapping of our noise here. Go back to this VOP and let's check before and after. And we see we made this cloud look a bit more organic now by varying its density. Okay, let's save this project and export our cloud as a VDB. So we don't need that volume slice here anymore. Just right click on the volume VOP here and say save geometry and choose a path.
And when we choose our path, the only thing that's uh, important here is to add a dot vdb as a suffix to the file so houdini automatically knows to save out the resulting volume as a vdb so let's hit accept here fire up cinema go to octane live viewer window and add a octane vdb volume here and within the vdb tab let's just select the file we just created and add a daylight as well as going into the settings and choosing path tracing dial down the gi clamp dial up the cost explorer and let's hit render Okay, we see just a tiny, tiny dot. And this is because the scaling of our VDB is way off. So let's hit in here in the VDB volume object and under the VDB tab, let's select hectometers as import unit and adjust the position of our daylight a bit so that the sun is hitting it a bit more directly. And now we go into the VDB volume medium tab and adjust the shading of the cloud here. So let's maybe move this a bit so that we can see in a clear sky. And the first thing I want to do is dial down the volume step length. This affects render times massively, but it also affects how much detail your volume and your cloud has. Then I would like to dial down the absorption depending on which version you're using and which workflow you're used to. You'd like to check or uncheck the invert absorption. I find it more logical to have this unchecked. So my absorption when I dial it down to be zero is not present. So there is no absorption now. However, I'd like to have a bit of absorption. So let's dial this up to 15% say, and go back one level and increase the scattering, something like 92, maybe dial down the general density to say 25 or five, or maybe even only two. So we now have our basic cloud here. And the beautiful thing about this setup that we just built in Houdini, the beautiful thing about this setup in Houdini is that we cannot only feed it these distorted spheres here, but also just feed it standard geometry with the help of a file node here. We just select our geometry. And in our case, I downloaded a model from the awesome 3dscans.com site. So let's just select that and maybe add a transform node. Like so. And let's wire this in the cloud. Sop in here, highlight it, dial up the resolution a bit so we get a bit more detail in here. Let's adjust our cloud noise and highlight our volume bob. So we adjust the density. Maybe let's in here dial down the noise scale. And what I want to do is middle click on the frequency input in my anti alias noise and go to promote parameter. So I now have my parameter available in my volume box context up here. And let's dial up the frequency a bit so the noise gets a bit smaller. Right click on the node again and save it out. So what you can basically do now is turn any shape that you come up with into a cloud and render it in any render engine that supports VDBs. Hope you had fun with this. Again, tag us, send us a message. If you produce any artwork using this, we are very excited to see what you guys come up with. So it's cheers and goodbye.